BNA stands for Brave New Animal. I didn't know that until recently. What's up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and it is Q&A time. Woohoo! All right, so first question I got is from Harry Leak. What are you going to do for the 300 subscriber special? This! Uh, thank you guys so, so much for almost 400 subscribers now. Since my last video, um, which is thanking you guys for 200, I've almost doubled! This is insane! Thank you guys so, so much. I hope that I can give you what y'all want to see. Thanks so much for supporting me. Wither Dragon Gaming and San Diego Gomez asks... How did you join or find the furry fandom? So, I've actually done it a couple times. Uh, once, when I was really, really young, I was like somewhere in middle school, so between 11 and 13, um, I found some <laughs> fan art of Crystal from Star Fox, and I'm like, ooh, I like this. This makes me feel things. And so I kind of dived further, and eventually I actually found the fandom itself. Um, and since as a kid I loved doing art, I thought, wow, well this is this is cool because I was in I, was, I, I liked the art style of anime. I just didn't like anime, and furry was a perfect thing. And of course, I was an animal lover my whole life, obsessed with cats, dogs, everything. Animals are dope. Um, here is my first fursona. I made this. This is my art from 10 years ago. So laugh at it or be inspired. I don't care. I love it. It's my first art piece that I can find because ah, when I was younger, um, I actually kind of left the fandom because bad things happened to me and I shredded all of my furry art. So I have nothing left. It's really sad. So after I left the fandom, um, I had a kind of coming back uh, only a couple years ago, actually, um, when I was on the Reddit or the subreddit Furry IRL, and a lot of people were talking about this Majira guy, and I'm like, well, who's that? And so I spent a night when I had a place to myself for like all night. I was just like, all right, let's watch every Majira video, and so I did, and I was obsessed. So now here we are, woohoo! I plan on doing a whole video about just about my experiences joining the furry fandom. Watch the video when it comes out because wow, my experience with the furry fandom as a kid was a bit messed up. Noble Wolf asks, congratulations on 200. Thank you. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, what are the posters up on your wall? All right. So the posters on my wall. Uh, first one, I'll go from over here to over there. Uh, this one is, I think, Gudra, a Pokemon. Um, I got this one at Ferlandia last year, two years ago at some point. It was my first furry con, and I'm like, ooh, this is trippy, and got it. Uh, this one here, down here, it is the Squid Sisters from a game called Splatoon. Um, love those female musician icons. Big into that. I hope to be one myself, although, <laughs> you know, the thing. Um, this is a big tapestry I got because one, it's forest green, definitely adds a little bit of color into my room. Um, and it also adds the, uh, it neutralizes the light so that I can just use the lighting from around my room. And no matter what time it is, I can make my videos consistent because right now it's eight at night. So no sunlight for me. Um, this one over here, I got this again at Ferlandia. It was um, cool, so I got it. Not really big story here. Again, though, Furlandia was my first real furry con, and so big, big, big on getting that merch. Um, another piece of, I think it's Pokemon art, I got, again, um, from the same artist that did the Gudra, actually. Got it because it was super trippy, and I like that kind of stuff. Uh, another piece of art. This is Hatsune Miku. I don't know if you can see it from back here. Uh, if you can't, I'll just take a pic. Um, but Hatsune Miku, again, another female pop icon. Love it so much. Here is my big wolf blanket. It's actually not a poster, it's a blanket. Um, but I like blankets up on the wall because it adds a decent acoustic treatment. 
I actually got this uh, in Alaska when I went there for work for a few weeks. That was a fun time. Tons of stories from that job. Uh, this is a mascot character from a very popular furry website. So yeah. Uh, and then that over there is Okami from the game Okami. I got that at an anime convention eons ago. And then on the other side of the wall, just more blankets because sound treatment. And that's the posters I have. Uh, I have a few more around the house, but they're a whole lot less interesting and story-wise. Kind of just got a bunch of stuff to decorate the place, so nothing exciting there. But yeah, that's my posters. Thanks for asking. Zachary Morris asks, Congratulations! I can't wait to see you hit a thousand next and get that play button, because you deserve it. That's too much. Thank you so much. Uh, question. What labels and pronouns do you identify with? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Well, I want to, because it's actually big for me. Um, I, technically, I'm non-binary. So call me girl, call me boy. I don't really care. It's just me. I'm Kezi, the coyote. Not a boy, not a girl, just kind of whatever you actually feel like calling me. Um, my inspiration came from Frisk from Undertale. Uh, in the game, they actually don't have a, a gender in the game. They're not referenced. Um, and I really like the idea behind it because what a lot of people have told me is that the idea is that you kind of insert yourself into their shoes. So, you know, if you're a boy or if you identify with boys better um, and you decide Frisk is a boy. If you identify with girls better, well, Frisk could be a girl. That's me. That's what I think. If you decide that like, well, I'm more comfortable if Kezi's a girl, go for it. I'm a girl. If you're more comfortable with Kezi being a boy. Go for it. I'm a boy. Um, sometimes I will gender myself just because it flows better. Um, like saying, you know, I'm a busy boy. It sounds better than uh, like, I'm a busy girl or whatever the heck. Um, one thing I don't like is I don't like man because, uh, no, I'm not a man. Not, not at all. But other than that, um, yeah, call me what you like. Whatever makes you the most comfortable, I am happy to be called it. Oh yeah, and I'm bisexual. Strife Dog asks, what inspired you to start making music? Also, I'm glad I came across your channel. I don't know a lot about music other than listening, but it's really cool to see and hear the process. Well, thank you so much. My biggest inspiration actually was a YouTuber named Andrew Huang. Uh, I made a video kind of about an app he made a couple videos back. Check it out, it's cool. But I love Andrew Huang. Biggest inspiration to say like, because he's the one who really kind of taught me that like, hey, make music, have fun. Music isn't about, you know, becoming some superstar or doing something crazy. It's just, it's about the music, man. And I live for that. Um, Andrew Huang really showed me that anyone can make music. And so that's kind of like where I came from with my other video is, you know, pushing the idea that like, you don't have to be some Mozart to make music. And uh, that's something I feel uh, Andrew Huang teaches is it really helps, uh, he really wants music to be more accessible, and I live for that. So Andrew Huang, definitely my biggest musical inspiration. Ellie Bug says, or asks, Yay, congratulations, so happy for you. Thank you. Uh, when did you first join the fandom? Who are your major music influencers and furry influencers? So I first joined the fandom, again, uh, in middle school, and then again, only a few years ago. Um, and that's when I really, really decided to dive into the fandom, was only a few years ago. Uh, biggest furry and music influencers, as I said, um, Andrew Huang for music, and for furries, Majira. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, uh, I watched every single one of Majira's videos, and just got thinking, you know what, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna be a furry. Juicy Green asks, what is your favorite DJ artist? Minus Skrillex, Marshmallow, Slushy, and many more. I actually have a lot of favorites. I can't really pick one. Um, all three of the ones that you just mentioned, love each and every single one of them, um, and some more as well. So uh, I, I actually have vinyl records of artists like Grizz, uh, Big Gigantic, Porter Robinson, Madeon, Daft Punk. What else do I have? Even some like 80s bands like Duran Duran, Prince, uh, Jefferson Airplane going even further back. 
I just love all kinds of music. So really, I don't really have like a favorite, but a big one I go to if someone's like, give me some new music to listen to, I will always recommend carbon-based lifeforms. They make psychedelic ambient music, and it's just, it's like listening to outer space. It's so cool, such a vibe, such a, uh, listening to their music is an experience. Fox2 Mike asks, what other hobbies do you have? Preferred foods, thin crust, or deep dish? So that's a few questions. Um, let's answer the first one, what other hobbies I have. Um, let's list them off. Um, obviously making videos, obviously making music, and obviously fursuiting. Um, I love doing video editing, so that's also super fun for me. I do, I do edit my own videos, um, and plan to for as long as I still have time to. But going off to things you don't see, um, I love to code. I actually used to be in college for computer science, so, um, that's cool. Definitely love computers. Um, retro computers are big for me. Uh, I used to have a DOS laptop when I was a kid. That was super fun. Retro gaming is a big thing. Um, and, you know, computer stuff, big for me. Definitely kind of, <laughs> kind of, definitely a huge nerd. So, yeah. And then, as I mentioned, when I first joined the fandom, um, art. I'm not as good of an artist as I'd like to be, but who is, honestly? But one of the things I really like doing is graphic design. So, you know, uh, logos, posters, banners, that kind of thing. Um, I do all of my own banner work and like, I, not every icon, because sometimes I'll commission an artist just to keep some flair going in my accounts. But most of the logo work I do, all me. The logo you see at the beginning, I made it. The little splat logo, I made it. I love doing design work, so that's a big one for me. Uh, and lastly, cooking. Um, oddly enough that you say that, I love to cook. So I love to cook all sorts of things. Making food is just a vibe. Um, I live alone now, but when I used to have roommates, one of my favorite pastimes was just cooking dinner for them. Super fun, super rewarding, and just like, yeah, cooking's fun, dude, try it. Preferred foods, there are no real preferences. I will try anything at least once, food-wise. Um, love all sorts of stuff. Um, I don't like vegetables, though. I just kind of have that mindset still. It's hard to break, but I'm trying to learn. So uh, if you're young, eat your vegetables. Just suck it up and eat them. You'll get used to it after a while. Uh, anecdotal point, um, I used to hate tea and coffee without sweeteners. Now I drink them straight. I'll just pour hot water, coffee or tea, and just drink it, it's fine. It doesn't, I don't even taste the grossness anymore. It's just, it's how I, and I only really do it because I'm lazy and don't really feel like putting sugar in stuff, but it's objectively better. So yeah, keep eating your stuff, keep eating your vegetables, and you'll get used to it eventually. The Wolniax asks, what kind of music do you really love to listen to? P.S. Look, you have more, another 200 subscribers. It means you have 400. Yes, I am excited for having so many subscribers. Again, thank you all so, so much for enjoying what I do, and I hope I can make it better. Uh, so the music I like to listen to, everything. I will listen to anything from candy core speed step to country music. I don't hate music. I don't understand people who like, you know, you know, don't understand real music, who are just like, well, back in my day, people knew how to play instruments. And then like, you know, if I put any one of those people in this room, they'd be like, what does this do? So, you know, each, each generation has its own music. And so I don't, I don't have a way of hating music. I like all kinds. Um, from, you know, a baby bashing on a keyboard to Mozart making beautiful stuff to, you know, some dude in his bedroom making a bop. All of it is so great. I love music. Um, some of my main genres though are, um, I listen to a lot of lo-fi hip hop just cause it's, it's good background music. Um, and, uh, oh gosh, what do you even call it? Future bassy funky stuff. Um, I like music that makes me want to dance. So dance music's big for me. Definitely love to dance. Cause you know, yeah, dancing's fun. Lion Plays asks, how did you come up with Kezi? The fursuit, the species? So, Kezi, 
Uh, I picked the name Kezi because I wanted a name that didn't sound too feminine, but also didn't sound too masculine either. I really wanted a nice median name that you're just like, you hear Kezi and you're just like, well, they seem cool. And uh, so yeah, I really hope I hit the nail on the head there. You know, tons of pink on my fursuit, but also pretty neutral tones. Um, the design of the fursuit was actually made by me. Um, I used a ref sheet, or not a ref sheet, but a, a ref sheet base from Made For You, although I'm not really gonna get a suit from them. Um, but I did the ref sheet all of myself, every piece of the design, all me. I have this little diamond on the back that like inspired me. Um, Majira actually inspired that. He has the stripes on the back of his and he said it's to break up the, um, the area. So like having this little diamond on my back, it breaks up the suit a little bit so it's not just bi some big brown thing you know it actually adds a little bit of interest so that like if i'm walking around a con you're just like oh that's kezi or whatever so the first suit design was all me uh the person who made the first suit was actually ginger suits uh she is amazing to work with super helpful super caring super compassionate loved working with her um just yeah she's great loved loved every bit of it love the suit so so much um this thing is super comfortable super well bit i abused the heck out of this suit and it's still holding up amazingly so highly recommend uh and the species so actually when i first joined the fandom i was considering becoming a bunny or a rabbit uh and the reason being is because uh so as you can tell by some of the posters around my room, um, definitely a little flirty, and I thought Rabbit would be fun to do that with, but I later decided to not do that because as I was first, or as I was rejoining the fandom, a lot of the people on Twitter that I vibed with were coyotes. And I'm just like, wow, you know, these seem like super chill people. They listen to good music. They do cool things. They have fun. They <coughs> smoke weed. You know, they do these kinds of things that I do. And I felt like I really related to uh, the people who chose coyote as their fursona a lot more than some of the other species. So that was the biggest reason why I picked coyote. And then the thing that really set into the stone was that at work, uh, they had this little laser thing Thing that had a uh, code name and its code name was coyote so every day I'd come into work and see in big letters coyote laser tool and I'm just like well that's oddly on the nose guess I should be a coyote then because I see it every day uh, so that was like a really big inspiration for me becoming a her that really kind of set in that's just like yeah you should definitely be a coyote it's the better choice uh, so yeah, love coyotes. Um, I actually didn't really know a lot about coyotes before I made them my persona, and now I love them. Um, if you think coyotes are bad, you're bad. That's all I have to say. Um, I think that they're amazing creatures. Love the idea of like uh, urban coyotes and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully, if I get to uh, get to be reborn into an animal, um, I hope I can be a coyote that runs around the city causing mayhem. That's my dream right there. SlushyFox056 asks, will you put your tracks on Spotify? Um, probably in the future. If enough people are interested in me putting all my music on Spotify, um, it might happen sooner than later. Right now, I'm working on getting a lot more just music out in general and ready to be released. I don't have a lot of music under my current name, um, but if you're wanting to listen to more of my music, um, I do upload sometimes on YouTube, but most of my music is on SoundCloud and on Bandcamp. Um, all of my stuff is free. If you wanna give me money, go for it, but otherwise, just listen to it. It's all available for whoever wants to hear it. I love sharing my music. Um, just right now, I don't wanna really wanna put it on Spotify until I have a good discography to actually upload. So that's kind of why it's not on there yet. But again, if enough people really want me on Spotify, happen sooner rather than later. That underwater tree asks, how many jars of peanut butter could you eat in one day? So this is actually kind of funny. Uh, I probably couldn't eat a whole more than a jar of peanut butter just cause I can't eat 
peanut butter that much because it's not great but when I was a kid and even now um, I would make peanut butter and jelly after peanut butter and jelly just over and over and over again I'd have like five in the span of two hours just because of how fun and easy and tasty peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are so I wouldn't say I could eat a full jar in a day but I could eat a lot Tan says asks so what's your genre? I can't quite figure it out by listening to your music. Do you do your own genre or do you do a certain type of music? So, I mean, I wouldn't say I do my own genre. You know, I'm not kind of like, I'm not pretentious like that. But at the same time, I don't actually really do a genre of music. I just kind of like make whatever sounds good. Sometimes I will go for a specific genre if I want to make like, um, like lately I've been trying to make dubstep. Uh, I really, really, really want to get like wonky skrillex s dubstep uh, out at some point, but it's really complicated. So definitely something I've been practicing more and more. Uh, another thing is uh, like lo-fi, for example, um, stuff that I can use in the background of my videos. Uh, so sometimes I'll go for a specific genre, but for the most, most part, I'll just like kind of make something and if I'm vibing to it, I'm vibing to it. I don't really stick to a genre. And last but not least, Okami XD asks, Hey, uh, I just checked out one of your music videos and saw you glow stringing. I learned how to do that when I first joined the fandom. How did you first learn how to glow string? So I've actually known about glow stringing or as otherwise called poi spinning um, for a while now. I've actually been super obsessed. I used to go to raves a lot and all those people with them little ball spinners were just, oh, I loved, loved, loved it so much and really never thought I could ever get into it. Um, recently though, I got some really fancy poi spinners and just kind of went to town. Um, I'm pretty dexterous already, so it was quick to pick up. And since then, I've just been kind of like trying to learn new and new tricks as time goes on. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of spinning a lot lately just cause uh, quarantine makes people depressed. Uh, but, um, Come see me at a con. I'm definitely gonna be spinning these poise all around. It's so fun, such a vibe. Um, soon I'll probably be doing another video or like a post on Twitter of me actually spinning poi to a specific song. So keep your eyes out for that. That's it. That's all the questions. Uh, thank you all so, so much for asking the questions. Thank you all so, so much for almost 400 subscribers. Even more mind blowing. I just, I can't believe how fast this is happening. Um, thank you guys so, so much. Hope you enjoyed my Q and A video. Um, might do this again in the future if y'all are interested, but until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.